Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, a different part of the, the, the Splatsville hub than I typically start from. Uh, we're playing Table Turf today, and along with me, we have a couple of experts on Table Turf. We have Hydrus and Sir Nerdbird, both of the Table Turf Battle server, which is the largest Table Turf community in the West. Um, and they are here to first watch me play around with a deck that I made without any input from the competitive community and to, to cringe inwardly, but not give me any hints as to what I'm doing wrong while I'm doing so. And then they're going to help me build a new deck and learn a little bit more about how competitive table turf works and what a good deck looks like along the way. What we're going to do is uh, I'm going to play around against Harmony. Uh, we've chosen Harmony because I have her unlocked to level 3, and also because it's on a board that's not terrible uh, for, for competitive play. Um, so while I'm getting all of those things set up here, uh, I'm going to let uh, Hydrus and Sir Nerdbird loose to introduce themselves a little bit more and also to talk a little bit about uh, what makes a board good for table turf and maybe uh, a little bit about the, the community as a whole. Hello, everyone. My name is Hydrus. I'm the founder of the Table Turf Battle server. I'm a t uh, tournament organizer, commentator, streamer. Uh, I kind of do a little bit of everything in TBS. I, you know, found the server back in like October of last year, and it's been around for almost a year. We almost have, you know, 2,000 members. And kind of commenting on this map right now, Lakefront Property is definitely a pretty competitively viable stage. We only have one band stage. Maybe we'll get to that later. But Lakefront Property is actually one of our counterpick stages um, in general. And the reason for that is, you know, the lake in the middle kind of contributes to a lot of different, you know, routing possibilities. You know, do you go to the, do you go up? Do you go down? Do you go to the left or right? It's kind of harder for a new player to understand, and it's one of those maps that are relatively unoptimized. Um, and I think our community is definitely very welcoming, and I think we have built up a very nice a uh, server full of people who are just kind of casually into table turf and then we have the more competitive hardcore players so if you are interested and want to learn more we have plenty of resources and yeah join tbs today uh today i have with me you know sir nerdbird he's a uh, does a lot of things like me he's also a mod in tbs how are you doing sir Bird? i'm doing very well thank you very much uh, as as hydrus has sort of introduced me already uh, I'm Sir Nerdbird, I am a competitive table turf commentator, and uh, I've been playing since the, the early days, the simulator era, uh, before we actually got um, player versus player table turf back in sort of December of 2022. Uh, the vast majority of what Hydra said uh, about Lakefront, um, definitely true, um, pretty uh, universally held, not as one of the central uh, competitive stages, but uh, generally pretty well regarded. And there's a lot of um, interesting uh, takes you can have on this stage. Uh, the central uh, lake uh, very much sort of changes how you play the stage compared to square squared, which is exactly the same shape, but just uh, fully filled in. Yeah, I think what really makes a good map to Nerbert is that uh, it has to be consistent in its design. It has to have some sort of design. Doesn't need, It shouldn't be like an open space like square squared. Uh, it doesn't encourage, you know, constantly clashing in 50-50s, which can be seen as kind of random. Uh, it has a variety of different playstyles. You can use a bunch of different decks. It doesn't favor one type of playstyle too heavily. I feel like that's what contributes to having a, you know, a consistently viable competitive table turf battle um, map, I would say. And a lot of the maps, you know, that are consistently played in tournaments are have kind of like this square shape, or they're generally larger, right? You know, maps like Double Gemini and Box Seats, you know, that's a different topic, but those are generally not uh, seen in the same light, I would say. I think uh, Double Gemini has become much more uh, well regarded in the competitive community over time. Oh, I 100% agree. But because it has those sort of uh, stepped edges, the combos that are useful on that map are very, very different to something like. Uh, like from property or square squared where you have the neat edges and the sharp corners Yeah, I think it's really interesting with double Gemini as well. I'm not sure what the you know the map 
size of... I'm not sure what the map size of Lakefront actually is, but I know that Double Gemini is one of the biggest maps in the game. And uh, its design is just super interesting. You can play a lot of bigger decks. And I feel like with kind of the bigger maps, you can more easily play those bigger decks in general. And we're kind of seeing a, you know, a metagame shift to that as well. We're seeing more players use bigger deck sizes uh, in general. I think that's a common thing newer players don't necessarily understand is that their deck can often be too small and then you can't encroach on pretty much any space at all, it feels like. Mm, absolutely. Having lots of special points uh, is really useful, but if you don't have the sheer number of tiles to be able to place down more than your opponent, uh, at more or less every single opportunity you can, then you're going to have a much harder time winning those games. Oh, that's really interesting. So I'm looking at the Wikipedia right now for Table Tier Battle. Lakefront Property and, and Thunderpoint actually have the same amount of tiles. They have 240, and then Gemini is at 249. So, you know, not too different. Uh, Lakefront Property is definitely one of the bigger maps that we have um, in the game right now. Ooh, interesting. Square Squared is smaller? Oh, I did not know that. That is pretty cool. Because, yeah, I, I kind of think that, like, you know, this map is... Basically, Square Squared have had a block in the middle, but really, it's kind of designed differently. Um, all the maps, map designs, excuse me, in this game, are super unique design-wise, and I think there's a lot more originality than actually the main game. Um, not joking with that. <laughs> I'm a big believer of you know most of the maps in this. Table turf map design is uh, where Tetris pieces are actually useful. Yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Come on. I, I guess Had to they. Get a laugh um... that one. Obviously, they're two-dimensional instead of three-dimensional, but the simplicity is often... Uh, it's, it's sort of a really useful canvas, I guess, in which lots of different decks can be useful, uh, even if they all are sort of uh, conforming to a particular... Oh my god, you won? No, no way! way. <laughs> no she way. didn't have a card to fill in that top no right. No way! I cannot believe yeah, that I can't she believe had to won pass. That scuffed deck. I, I wasn't even... <laughs> Whoa, 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 let's not jump to the insult straight away, Hydras. Let's just give him a little bit of time <laughs> little to bit. revel in his victory here. Let's go, 130 points. I <laughs> I thought it was lost. I thought that there's got to be a way that she can fill in that 3 by 4 space right. she had occupied in, in, on her side. but Yeah, a little jug could have fit on the right there, but uh, yeah, you, you uh, won that pretty handily. NPCs mm -hmm. are definitely very interesting. They, their behavior in comparison to human players is extremely inconsistent, mostly due to like how they're programmed. They all have different styles, right? Yeah, absolutely. Harmony has... I, I think an there are three style. archetypes. Yeah, yeah there are like three archetypes of NPCs. Uh, special in the building game. and normal. Or it's like mm -hmm. balanced. Yeah, balanced. So the vast majority of the NPCs have the balanced archetype, but Harmony and... Actually, I'm not sure who else. Uh, I think it's Harmony and one other uh, NPC have the aggressive type, and it makes them extremely hard to uh, play because they're just going to try and rush you regardless of what you do. And I think that makes Harmony a particularly hard NPC to get the uh, the card sleeves for. for. Yeah, mm. and uh, kind of talking about that, uh, Jem, what... Uh... How much table turf have you played? I mean, you're clearly level 23. Uh, did you play a lot kind of near launch? Yeah, I played mostly near launch, like in the first maybe month or so. Um, I'd just pick it up for an hour after I was done on, on stream or something. Oh, that's awesome. Um, but uh, I haven't played a lot of it recently. I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of how to play against computer players, but I have no right. idea how well that holds up against human players. Yeah, uh, playing against actual people is a whole different ball game, and yeah, we can actually help you do that uh, by building a a new deck. I guess I'd say uh, at this point that the computer players are never going to change or iterate on their strategies, whereas with the uh, players, you know, the human players, obviously everyone's always trying to build a better deck that counters this, that, or the other, or works better on this stage. And especially as new cards come out, uh, some of the newer cards, for example, uh, Shelly and Donny, are becoming increasingly popular on certain stages like uh, Square Squared, and a little bit on yeah, Thunderpoint, uh, just because of their sort of diagonal shape. Um, but you're obviously not going to get any of those new strategies uh, really coming from the newer NPCs, even though uh, 
they're using some of the newer cards. How many cards do you have? Oh my uh, god, what? That's uh, that's more than I have. That is, <laughs> I'm jealous. <Really? laughs> I mean, I have more cards than that, but yeah, you must you must play a lot. Like, you have Bandit Shiver. I, I mean, surprise, surprise! Jen oh, yeah, from Split to... School plays the video game quite a lot. Wait, at some wait point. How, yeah. many, how many bits do you have now? Uh, if you go to probably you many X. 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 Oh my God! Okay. That's, uh, yeah, pretty comfortable amount. What can you guys tell me about what I'm running here? So, well, first question we have is: Do you want to use this for every map? Do you want? To, do, I assume it's. Oh yeah, yeah, good point. Um, let, let's let's make it like a, a just kind of a generalist deck, and maybe before we get into the deck in specific, let's talk about yeah. like because again, I have not played this with human players very much. So, <laughs> what yeah. is it that is desirable in a deck? Um, I, I guess I can talk a little bit about my general thoughts about how to play table turf, and then you that guys can fill in whatever that would I'm definitely missing. Be, that would definitely be very useful. Okay. Uh, so that we kind of know what kind of deck. Yeah, what what, what I'm sort like of thinking to... of doing with this. Okay. Absolutely. So, yeah. At the start of a game, you start like pretty far away from your opponent, and so uh, and you also, it's really important to control like the middle of the board. It's it's a concept in chess. It's a concept in Splatoon. It's a concept in soccer. It's it, it's you know when you're in the middle, you have access to more of the play area. And you, you, it's more powerful to control those positions. So since I'm not in the center from the beginning, I always try to roll to get one of these like really long skinny pieces so that I can push towards the middle as quickly as I can. And then it's from like the end of one of these points that I will start spreading out and like blocking where I think that uh, my opponent is trying to go. So I might use like one of these to lock off an area. I might use one of these to lock off an area. I might just, you know, have a, ch and then like once I've got areas cordoned off for just me, I'll try and get like Octoballer or um, Flyfish or Krakon into the places that I've, you know, secured for myself to fill them in quickly so that I can get a whole bunch of points down on the board before the opposing side has a chance to respond and like invade my territory. Um, and then I'm trying to set up often for like a, a, a shiver ideally, but maybe if there's another card that will uh, fit better and like I can't fit this in somewhere, I'm trying to build up enough special points that I can play a larger card at the end as a special. Um, so while I've been, you know, moving out into the middle, I'm trying to leave my uh, special points near the enemy side so that then I can use the little cards here to fill in gaps and get special meter. And then I can play one of the big ones into the enemy side and take up as much space of, of their side as I can with one of my last plays. That's my general thought process. I guess I'd say that, that is, you've demonstrated a really, really uh, good base understanding of how table turf works. Uh, reaching out into the middle with those very long cards, uh, I think seven long cards, I think in the case of Elita, is uh, really, really important. And gaining uh, the influence over that center point of the stage and getting to the middle first is really important and it sets you up to be able to cordon off those areas. Uh, you kind of have to be careful of not doing that too aggressively, not being too optimistic of how far forwards you can push, especially with the larger cards. So if you try and um, cordon off an area, let's say, with the dynamo roller that you've got there, that's a size 13. If your opponent decides that they want to play a steel eel, uh, orientated, orientated so that it's going straight through that, then your attempt to block it off has just failed completely and you're now in a massively disadvantageous position. So deck building and your mindset when it comes to playing it are very heavily interlinked and you have to know how to use the cards correctly as well as picking them in the first place. I guess aside from that, the deck that you've got uh, the framework for it is very, very good. It's very solid. 
maybe with one piece lacking, Hydrus, do you think there's anything here that is... I think, um, well, it was a lot wrong. <laughs> um, I think, I think Jam definitely has a good idea, a solid, he has solid fundamentals with, like, how to at least approach a match in terms of game theory, but it doesn't really show in the deck. Uh, there's a concept called Deck Curve, which is present in other trading card games. It's basically just the balance of cards that you have in terms of, like, size or efficiency costs or whatever, or special costs or whatever it's called. Uh, first of all, you have too many smalls. The mids all kind of do the same thing, um, a lot of the mids, and you don't have enough openers. You have maybe two, maybe three good openers, and there's also not very a lot of good combo synergy. Uh, like, what is so that's, that's a lot of terms we just used. Can we maybe define some of those? Um, right. Because I'm, I'm having trouble following myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, you can, uh, you can, sorry. I, uh, I really get into it. Um, what did you want to ask about first? So so you're, there's small mid, mid okay, I'm so, assuming those are just let, like the number of, of blocks they take that. up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see that number in the bottom left? The, uh, of each card. Of, of each, each card, card, right. They're like the number yeah, of blocks so that, that is, they have. Yeah, yeah. That is the block count. That is the size of the card. So uh, that steel over there, it's 10 blocks. And it costs mm -hmm. four special points to play. So generally... The definition of sizes is very nebulous in the community, and it's a bit inconsistent. But I would say, generally, small cards are categorized as being one block to five blocks, and then medium cards would be, you know, six blocks to 12 blocks. Uh, three twelves, we'll get into that. Those are different. Uh, and then 13 to 17 blocks are kind of your large cards. Those are going to be your openers. Those are going to be uh, potentially, you could use them as a special attack. You can maybe use it for base building. Those are your heavy hitters. You want to have a decent amount of those, you know. Those are like the average definitions, I'd say, for sizes with cards. Yeah, I, I guess I'd say that I would probably classify uh, medium cards as going up to 11 rather than 12. Just because yeah, you have depends. that jump from uh, four special uh, points to play the card as a, as a right. special attack to five. Right. But like Hydra said, it's a very kind of inconsistent thing. It's the general idea that uh, is more important. Yeah, the special cost gradually goes up uh, with the cards. Um, so it goes from one special cost, like one special point to play this special attack, all the way up to the six cost, uh, which is what Shiver is. It's six cost. There's only like four of the, no, five of those cards in the game, I believe. Yeah, I think so, Fry yeah, is one of them, and I don't remember what the others are. But... Yeah, it's like Fry, Deep Cut, Octavio, Captain, <laughs> pretty much. So that's kind of another thing to pay attention to. Uh, special cost is like, you don't have to pay attention to as much as kind of the size. So definitely the curve needs to be adjusted. Uh, Swiffer, Spotter Scope, E-Leader, 4K, Steel, they all kind of do the same thing. Um, especially Steel and, and E-Leader are so similar that you can, it's really just use one or the other. It's not necessarily that you use both. Um, Steel is really nice. I like Steel a little bit more, but e is also really nice because, you know, you can use it as a special attack in the end of the game. It also combos with the Sculpt e -leader, so they actually fit together. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but, uh, it's a pretty cool, neat little combo. Uh, so. Out of, out of the three cards in the middle, the, uh, Splat Scope, the Steel Eel, and the e -leader, I think the Scope is definitely the odd one out there. It's definitely the weakest card out of the three of them. Oh, 100%. Yeah, uh, you know, the other cards like Octoballer and Flyfish don't really have a lot of synergy that we call it synergy, but combo synergy with a lot of these cards. Like, how are you going to get Flyfish's special? Mm. Um, what are you going to use Octoballer for? You don't necessarily need to activate a card special point in order, to, in order for it to be viable. Look at Tri-Stringer, for instance. Um, mm. That's kind of used aggressively, and it's it's not really meant to be activating it special a lot of the time. A lot of the time it's used to wrap around stuff, but... It, yeah, uh, there definitely needs to be more of a consistent theming with the types of cards that you have. And there's different types of decks you can run, right? You know, you can run uh, line decks, socket decks, staircase, square. Uh, there's so many different terms um, they won't be getting into, probably. But there's a lot of different themes you could go with. And obviously, you know, having seven lawns is super important because it's the maximum uh, width a card can be. And it can use to lock off uh, certain areas of certain maps completely. So that's also really important. Uh, just yeah. so you have a little bit more context about what Hydrus was just talking about in the context of this deck, uh, I think the the top half, maybe the first uh, first nine cards you have there, going down to where Elita are, 
those sort of mostly fit into the archetype of a line deck. Maybe the splatter shot is a little bit more into sort of a socket or a staircase type yeah, deck. But the vast majority of those are very thin lines. Uh, generally, you'd be using those cards to sort of draw neat boxes, I guess. Reach out into middle and then reach right. across to kind of have this big box that you can then sort of neatly stack uh, your cards in. Uh, it's generally the, I guess, deck ideology behind that, the methodology of how you Yeah, I would get rid of the Octoballer or the Flyfish, it doesn't really matter which, and I would place it with the either 4k scope. Because um, you're going to place both cards anyway, but you definitely want to balance out your openers more and make them a bit more versatile. Either you can definitely open with, and it combos with a lot of different stuff, right? Uh, okay. You can definitely replace the Octoballer for sure. How about uh, how about I actually get this deck copied over into the next slot, and then we'll make the changes there, so we can have the before and after. Uh, if you go if you go up one and then go down to copy, that makes it a lot then, easier. Okay. Yeah, it's really nice. Okay, here we go. So this is the one that we're we're fixing up. So we're saying uh, we'll swap out. I'll probably get rid of this for the oh, and sort by number. For the 4K scope, which was a 13, there it yep, is. Yep, it's a 13. There you okay. go, yeah, an Octoballer. Octoballer necessarily isn't bad, but the thing is, like, generally, in terms of the perceived metagame, uh, I think a card is necessary. There's not a lot of necessarily bad cards in Table Turf, it's just you have to design the deck around it. And Octoballer is one of those cards where you have to design the deck around it. E-Leader, the E-Leaders, you can kind of just slap in any deck, and it'll work, right? It's very versatile in that sense. Hmm. Uh, there something are... like Flyfish too. It's not very versatile. It, the special is really hard to activate as well. Yeah, the thing um, about Flyfish yeah. is that it's uh, literally impossible to activate Flyfish's special unless you play two cards around it because yeah. it's on uh, the two free spaces are on the opposite sides. So because of that, it's not there are cards that do its job better, I guess. And right. one of them that I would suggest uh, is Mudmouth, which is yeah, my mouth is a pretty classic, uh, I'd say, safety net to kind of learn the ins and outs of combos. Um, the my mouth and suction bomb combo is also really consistent. Well, it's, well, let me rephrase that. It's a very easy combo to pull off, and it's very satisfying. Mm, it's an absolute classic, frankly. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't rely on it completely, though, because I've seen people uh, lose yeah. tournaments to it at the ends of tournaments, specifically. Yeah, but... it, it's definitely a, well, I guess, because everyone knows what you're doing, if you're playing, if you're going against human players, then people will try quite hard to disrupt it. But if right. you're playing against AI players, as long as you're not placing Mudmouth in a position where it's going to uh, get overlaid by a card being played on it on the same turn, then it's very, very safe. And it's a really reliable way to get a lot of tiles in a quite neat square space or, or rectangular space, I suppose, and also getting those two special points as well. Yeah, exactly. So, so kind of looking at the, you know, the curve of your deck here or the balancing of the block sizes, you know, concerning the cards, you have roughly four smalls, you have five medium cards and then six large cards. And you also don't have a 312. So maybe we can focus, I feel like, so you, you said cards. 312 a couple times. C could you explain oh, yes. that concept? My, my bad. Yeah, so I can explain the definition. So a 312 card, uh, the 312s are, they're 12 blocks you can scroll up. Um, they're, they're the multiplayer specials in the game. Uh, you can show it in the for the viewers. So those are 312. So they are worth 12 blocks, but they are cost three special points to play. So objectively, they are better than a lot of the other 12 block cards in the game. Uh, and they're pretty much instrumental in getting a you know a 24 point swing and getting a huge advantage towards the end of the match uh now to balance this the developers did not add a special point inside the cards themselves otherwise they'd be kind of broken um th discussing 312s can be a whole other topic but basically since you're, you're trying to build a general deck you want to have you know one 312 especially if you're starting out you can run two of them but it's really difficult you have to build six special points consistently but choosing your 312 uh, generally kind of fits near that category of like your large cards um, and you generally don't play it as a normal card you play it as a special attack towards the end of the match like the final turn so maybe we can get into uh you know get okay the so we're, we're using the one of these kind of like how i was trying to use shiver and and i failed to because i had no space right 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 yeah and that's the nice thing all these 312s have really nice shapes 
so they fit a lot and you seem to have a lot of extremely good um meta 312s there's only a couple which are kind of kind of stinky but you know most of them are pretty good i'd say okay. and honestly you can kind of use you know, there's only two 312s you can scroll up like one row i think okay so you have so the only 312s that i would not recommend to use if you're doing solo is i wouldn't use big bubbler trizuka uh or booyah bomb the rest you can honestly really use a booyah bomb is near one of the worst 312s in the game it's a beginner's trap we kind of we jokingly call it um it's maybe we'll get into another time but but yeah, uh, besides those four, you can kind of use whatever you want, honestly. Um, they all have kind of different advantages, disadvantages. You know, choose okay. whatever you want. I guess, just to explain a little bit more the philosophy behind the 312s, is the reason you want to be playing them on that final turn is that you're able to get uh, a, a really impactful, uh, possibly 24 tile shift only for those three special tiles. So you're getting a card the same amount of value mm. you're getting a special attack with like let's say the same value as uh the uh heavy splatling in your deck but for two fewer special tiles so you're able to do a lot more with fewer special points if that makes sense okay yeah the perceived kind of best 312 in the game is still a bit up in the air there's a couple that can definitely take the cake like Triple Link Strike, Zipcaster, Ultra Stamp, but we've seen a lot of these other 312s literally win tournaments, so at the end of the day, it's whatever you really want. Um, there's just a couple which are very hard to use and I would not use whatsoever, especially in solo. Uh, Booyah Bomb. Uh, <laughs> oh man, that card is something. Um, I guess uh, for people who want to put 312s into their own decks, I would recommend starting with Ultra Stamp because that's generally considered to be one of, if not the best 312, just for the general play. As well. But the most important thing with 312s is that you're happy and are consistently able to place them. So I guess it's one of those things where if one of the shapes uh, in the available 312s just really clicks in your head and you think, okay, yeah, I can immediately see on a board at the end of the game where this 312 is gonna go, then that's kind of more important than what people would generally say, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah I like, uh, I... something that reaches out but has a pretty good chunk that I can plop into the enemy side. Yeah, shape um, is so very important. I, like, I can plops. understand why, like, Zipcaster would be good because that can reach into an enemy side and then put a bunch there so you can get around all the special tiles they have in the way. Mm, and absolutely. Ultra Stamp as well. Um, like, Ink Strike looks really interesting because you can, like, zigzag around a, a yeah, problem area. Yeah, the rotations are really cool. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah. Um, the other thing I wouldn't recommend is don't use Crab Tank in Solo 312. It's not very good. It's very hard to get consistently max value out of Crab Tank in Solo. But if you run it on in double 312, so if you play it on, like, the second to last turn instead of the last turn, it's very hard for the opponent to ink over, and then you can play your 312. Uh, so, yeah, that's the only other 312 I would not use if you're running one. Um, Crab Tank's potential isn't fully unlocked in solo. Yeah, um, it, it's, a, it's a card that's very hard to get maximum value out of, yeah. but you're always going to get something using it because yeah, of its of, very weird shape. A lot of the top tier 312s are very good at getting max value consistently, and they have great shapes. So, yeah, I mean, you can... Uh, so we won't you're... really give you a suggestion... You were talking about, uh, you know, how this will get, because I'm looking and it's got three special tiles compared to the five that I get out of the heavy splatling, which makes sense. Yeah. Are you saying that I should probably be replacing the, the heavy splatling then with one of these? Um, I would say, not, not necessarily. Uh, it, it Heavy splatling is definitely, both heavy splatlings are very versatile and they're super uh, used, they're, they're used a lot competitively in our tournaments. So yeah, um, you could replace it. Uh, heavy splatling just kind of works. It works a little bit better with like staircase types of decks. So like that staircase shape the heavy has, it works better at that. So yeah, you could replace it. And I could see um, this being like, like I could see the heavy being really good on maps that are like diagonal that have the diagonal oh, yes. walls. Absolutely. Uh, there's one yeah. that's like a double diamond or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would um, say if this is gonna be a general deck, you want to use the heavy splatling deco. Uh, I don't know if you have that bot yet, but it's only five bits, um, and it's specifically better for certain maps such as Thunderpoint and River Drift, where you're going from left to right and okay. the heavy spine deco the, its rotation is basically better than vanilla so uh yeah um you could probably 
I would say you could probably replace like one of your um, your bigger cards with your 312s. So you could probably replace Krakon. Uh, Krakon is definitely not bad, but it has a super big vulnerability. And that thing eats Ultra Stamps. It's just ridiculous. So I would probably replace your crack on with uh, okay. your So, so I, you're, you're thinking keep I, Shiver in there? Because my, my idea with Shiver was to be that card that I'm playing at the end. And so if that's kind of what my thought process is with it, is there like a different way that Shiver is played? Well, the thing is, like, since Shiver is in the biggest size classification in the entire game, you, you, you also want to use, if you pull Shiver, you want to use Shiver as an opener. Uh, okay. Shiver's not the best opener in the game, but she's very high up there. Um, Captain, I don't know if you're familiar with the Captain card, but How Captain... Is, is, I'm assuming that's another super big 16. one. 16. 16, yes. Seems oh, like you have it, is. which is great. Yeah, Captain is universally considered one of the best openers for most maps in the game. It kind of suffers a little bit on maps like Lakefront, but it's still really, really good. Uh, there's nothing really that beats it as an opener. Um, and it's also super nice. It's great as a special attack, and it's very nice as an opener, because you can play with the tentacles facing forward and if you play with the tentacles facing forward you won't lose a lot from a clash so it's pretty okay. nice i guess i would say that uh, replacing shiver with captain is a very good decision i would be more inclined to replace uh splatter scope with your 312 rather than heavy deco um just because heavy deco is very good at reaching around corners in the sense of a general deck and it's also used for more than just it's not a very good special attack so it's not competing with your 312 okay. if that makes any sense yeah so so I think, uh, grab the splatter scope because i i think we mentioned we already have a lot of like oh yeah definitely cards. cut the splatter scope um okay. it's, yeah. you could literally run splatter scope is basically just a worse splat charger um it does it's the same job but worse um, because it has wide, so two wide. because it's three wide Yes. It's a lot harder just to trying fit to get a, into those. A sense Splat Charger's like... eight. Eight? Yeah, eight. Splat Charger or Zekofin Splat Charger are both really good. Uh, I would run Zekofin personally, okay, but here we go. due to the map orientation. But yeah, either both these cards are really good for poking. They're great for special attacks at the end of the game. Uh, they're just amazing. Um, these are some of the best poking tools in the entire game, and they're seven long. So whether you run, uh, whether you replace Splatter Scope with the Zekofin Splat, the, the Zekofin Splat Charger or the Vanilla, it's entirely up to you. Um, but yeah, Ultra Stamp is pretty consistent to start out with. Uh, I usually put my Ultra Stamp towards like the bottom of the deck, but um, it doesn't really matter too much. Can I, like, I guess... switch the order of them so that it's in... Yeah, order? I tend to put... Uh, in my... Well, what I do is I tend to put my 312s... Oh, here we go. Right after, right after my... Or right before my Heavy, uh, just so it's a little bit easier to look at. So, yeah, I mean, you have a decent amount of large cards that can work as openers. You have at least six... And now it's looking a little bit more balanced um, in general. And one uh, thing we one thing we haven't really mentioned so far is the total size of this deck. I was actually quite surprised with how large your original deck, your uh, your bad <laughs> deck, was, <laughs> um, <laughs> because a lot of people have a tendency to make the size the total size of their deck relatively small. I think the starter deck is actually really really quite small. I think it's somewhere in the realm of. 115 to 125 total Yeah, the tiles. deck you get at the beginning of the game. <laughs> mm. uh, and quite a lot of people tend to sort of stay in that sort of 120 to 130 kind of range. But uh, the general shift uh, in the competitive table turf community is increasingly towards larger and larger decks. Because I think, as I said earlier, having that sheer volume of tiles, if you're able to play them consistently, is just going to be better, because that's the aim of the game. Mm -hmm. So is yeah, this 100%. like in a, in a normal range for competitive, or are they get... Yeah, they get absolutely. Yeah, this is, uh, this is I mean, in a very nice spot, still, I think. Yeah, this is still unfinished. You have too, you, Again, you have too many small cards. Uh, generally, you only want to be running two small cards, maybe three. It depends on what you're kind of trying to go for. But the Octo Missile is... Octomissile is a weird card. I never really see it used because it's outclassed and there's cards that can do its job better. Um, hmm. Think of like the Clash Blaster argument in the main game. Um, you know, you could play Clash Blaster, but you could play Luna or you could play S Blast, stuff like that. So, yeah, I'd say the three smalls you have at the top are all really good. Uh, I, I would just run those, honestly. Okay, um, absolutely. 
the other thing too is like the three small cards at the top they each have like a mirror or i don't know what it's called like a mirror they have an alternative version so splat bomb has small fry uh I, yeah splat bomb actually, has small fry oh, here it is, is it just not unlocked oh no that's no, the no, one no, i was looking at i no, actually do right. have it unlocked there yeah it yeah so whether i'm gonna state it outright it does not matter whether you use small fry or splat bomb it just you know does it which one fits in your deck better? Th there's a very convincing argument that the uh, better card art for small fry makes you play better. <laughs> it uh, does, does make you play better. <laughs> you do have a point there. I, I'm actually starting to become convinced. Yeah, uh, we're starting to we're starting to convince you. I'm yeah. a small fry believer now. Buy, buy small fry today. But really, it depends on how it, does your deck orient more from like left to right or the other way around. So yeah, it's personal preference. Now, suction bomb versus fizzy is a little bit different. Because uh, the special point is located in a different position. They serve two different pur mm -hmm. purposes. Um, Fizzy, for its special to be activated, you need to play it against a wall. It's very, it's more, much more wall-dependent. It serves a very different purpose. It can't be as aggressive as Suction. That's purely because of the special tile placement. Suction, it's way more versatile because it's at the end. It's almost like a mini wiper, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You can special attack with it. You can break through enemy flanks or not any flanks but you can break through the enemy side and gain area that you might not necessarily have so fizzy you, you i actually saw speed. me use it like that in the match that i was playing yes. earlier I, yeah, that was did. how i got my fly fish in there and i, mean, like, I was uh, very impressed by that but i couldn't yeah, say anything was, oh, i sort of just wordlessly of... sat here nodding my head and i was like yep yep well done Jeff. Yeah, well done it's great yeah because the npcs actually do that but uh, a lot of new players you know don't actually do that you know using Sacrificing your small card to break into the opponent's territory is super valuable. And, you know, you want a tip, a uh, little tip, you know, use your small cards to, as a special attack, right? So, yeah, um, I would say for this deck, I would say suction is better. But fizzy, I'm still a believer in fizzy. It's just whatever you like more. Uh, suction is just easier to use. Let's just say that. I'm going to jump in here and say that I don't like fizzy. So yeah, we have a fizzy hater and a fizzy believer. You know, we're this is a, yeah. this is a podcast I, round. I also I find it when when I sometimes I do want to use the suction bomb for its special point. Um, yeah. Sometimes I'll like set it up so I can put it up against a wall, and I right. always find that it's easier to line up it, the the special point when it's at the end yeah. with like a corner or something. Exactly. Like because this one's further in the middle, so I need to cover like more squares yes. with my own yeah. cards to be able to cover the, that so it's more conditional than i'm able to get it i feel like this this is, is generally why um it, it, suction is generally considered better than fizzy uh, in much the same way that uh vanilla wiper is considered generally better than its variant oh yeah uh, we're going to be seeing a similar argument there um splatana wiper deco special point is located in a bit of a more of an awkward spot it's kind of like nzap special point location like, if you look at the end zap uh, card... Where's the uh, wiper? Uh, if you go down a little bit more. Do you have Splatana oh, wiper deck? okay. I have Splatana uh, I wiper. Yeah, um, so I would... Per so, like, if you look at the end zap card... Uh, end zap. The end zap card right there, it's, like, up. Here? You go up one row. Oh, the, oh, the yeah. 85. Yeah, yeah, okay. so that. Well, it doesn't really matter, but... They, basically, if that card was straightened out, that would be a Splatana wiper deco. And that mm. that special okay. location is kind of weird. Um, again, I I feel like Fizzy and Splatana Wiper Deco can work. You just have to design the deck around it, and it's more so used for like special farming rather than being super aggressive, right? They're not mm. bad cards, but they just serve a different purpose. They're a little less, a little bit less versatile. So yeah, Splat Bomb or Small Fry, Suction Bomb, Wiper. Those are three of the most meta smalls. You're set. Uh, I don't really think you need to run anything else. Octo Stamp is also really good. Um, uh, I guess when it comes to the Octo Missile you've sort of got to think about what that card is doing in your deck. You've got to think about, okay, what situations have I used this card in previously? And are there any other cards which could do its job better? Yeah, the Octomissile definitely has to go. I mean, it's its shape is very awkward, and there's cards that can do its job better. Uh, and it's being seeing that competition in terms of utility from both the Suction Bomb and the Wiper. Uh, and Wiper, what can we not say about it? It does so many different things. Is what it was what is one of the best cards in our tier list. Uh, could, Wiper does not take any L's. Honestly, we could talk about Wiper for way too long. <laughs> yeah, but, but no, the, definitely don't change the name of that. The TLDR is that Wiper is considered uh, basically universally as one of the best cards in the game. 
and it's incredibly versatile, and it should more or less be in almost every single person. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. It never hurts that library. But yeah, like we were saying, you don't need Octomissile, and you should probably replace it with a mid-sized card. So anything from the six card or six block range to the eleven card range, I would say. Uh, okay. I would say. So yeah, you kind of have a lot of different options. Um, and you also I, want a couple of seven lawns too, right? Hmm. I guess. A card that's sort of uh, jumping out to me right now is the Sloshing Machine. Uh, if you go slightly up, it's a 7 cost to your right. Oh yeah, Sloshing Machine has definitely seen a bit more use lately. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there's a lot of different... Mid-sized cards are definitely, I'd say like the second, probably the hardest thing to actually put inside of a deck, actually make work. I, At least that's... Because your mid-sized cards are definitely your bread and butter. It's going to be used for your combos and... You know, they're just, they're, ca they're cards that you really want to pay attention to. So yeah, I mean, I could see a lot of different replacements. Um, I could think of Ballpoint, Splat Charger, uh, Rapid, <laughs> the other Splatter Shot, if you're that crazy. You know, I there's, guess a lot of, there's a lot of different when, options. When it comes to deck building, right now what we're doing, this is definitely the first draft of this deck. Hopefully yep. after uh, we finished with all, oh, sorry. After we finish with all of this, uh, and Jem is happily using this deck in all of his future table turf games, uh, I guess, Jem, you can consistently uh, iterate on this. You're going to think, okay, I'm having trouble using this card in this situation. What are the cards that might do it better? What are some combos that I might be able to pull off with some other cards? What do I want out of this deck? And then you can come back to this screen and sift through all the replacements for an indeterminate period of yeah. time, probably hours. But. So my, my, my thought with uh, this card was that there were some times where I had a special point that I needed to slot something into. I needed to be able to like yeah um, insert the one little nub and get it around the corner to fill that spot in. But I didn't want to like just spend an entire... I, I, I didn't want to focus exclusively on that. I wanted to be getting points outside of it as well. So I wasn't just going to run, like, both Small Fry and Splat Bomb for that. And so this oh, was yeah, a way that no. I could, like, fill that hole. But I figure mm -hmm. I could probably do a pretty similar thing with the sloshing machine here, which is why I locked that in there, where I mean, I'm yeah, getting two more points like... for it, but I'm getting, like, an extra row's worth of... Um, I guess the one thing I should just say, um, sloshing machine is orientated... Uh, it's the other way around to Octomissile so that m yeah. you might have some uh, and i was gonna say too like um i feel like trisaucher's shape is very similar to octomissile obviously you're not gonna run trisaucher is a five obviously you're not gonna run trisaucher because you already have three smalls but trisaucher is really solid both tries are really solid and they have a very similar job to what octomissile is trying to do kind of you know, getting that nub that you can um easily activate later but yeah kind of looking at the seven launch here i mean what do you have you have either you have Steel, and you have Classic Swiffer. So, those three cards are not bad, especially Swiffer. Swiffer's a bit slept on. This but is a, a six long, isn't it? It's, uh, it, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm, yes. I think it is, yeah, yeah. If the I, two if, blocks are on the bottom. If I can still count correctly, yes, I think yeah, it that, is. That, that definitely, um, it's not a bad card, but I don't think it's going to fail this deck. I would honestly replace it with one of the Splat Chargers, yeah, I was just, so, I was looking no. at these like these seem kind of nice, and I don't so, remember these. The Maybe I got these recently or something, and I didn't remember them. Right. So you know the concept that I mentioned of heavy spotlight and deco, to where like the rotation of deco is better as an opener for certain maps. Mm -hmm. So the same kind of works for you know uh, the chargers here. So on certain maps, Zeklafin is actually objectively better than Splat Charger as an opener, and some people just prefer you know the special point orientation a lot more. Uh, but, you know, both cards are really good. It's whatever you really want. Uh, you can just run either or mm. for this. this. I don't think it really this matters. This is a good example of a situation where you put one in your deck, uh, but you'd come back to it and assess whether or not you wanted to try out the move. Right. Does it work for your combos? Do you like how it works on a lot of the most common maps, commonly played in tournaments? But yeah, both cards are very solid. I wouldn't say one is better. Maybe second is a little bit better. But uh, yeah, so the other thing too, Either 4K and Steel. Again, these were voted both as S tier cards. Like these are insanely good. I like Steel a little bit more than Either, but it doesn't really matter. They both kind of do the same job. 
Now, the thing is, since they both do the same job, you, have to, you can probably cut one of them. What can that be? Probably Steel Eel. And what I would probably replace with Steel Eel uh, is probably the Ballpoint Splatling, a king in Table Turf. I mean, where, it's, where is that? Uh, it's a uh, 10. Yep, it's, it's right to the right. To the right. There yeah. you go. Okay. Yeah, so Ballpoint and Blob Blobber, those two cards were both used extensively by a player named Showers. She used to be one of our the best Western players, kind of the earlier era of the game. And she really trademarked both of these cards and fully brought it into the metagame. Ballpoint's a little bit more versatile than Blob, but both are still really good. You know, Ballpoint is super, super versatile, and it, it can always combo something. It combos a crack on that splatter shot, right? Uh, it has a lot of different, you know, things going on. So yeah, you know, what combos do we got? So we got, you know, both E leaders. We got the Ballpoint of the crack on. We got the splatter shot into the crack on. You know, we get the suction to the mud mouth. We have the splat charger as a poking tool. Uh, machine looks a little bit too awkward for me and i'm gonna give my own personal recommendation now if you do add this card you might have to replace one of your large cards uh do you have power clam at all that's an 11. looks like uh it looks like a whopper <laughs> mm -hmm. um there we go the whopper the we call it the <laughs> whopper it's like a joke in our community but yeah uh so power clam i think is objectively better than crack on uh, it has a little bit more special vulnerability. It's not as huge. It's great as a combo tool. It does so many things. Um, you might want to sort your deck by size. Might be a little bit easier to ascertain. Yeah, I, I uh, just did that. If you swap ball points and elite oh, to normal right. rounds. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, you can also cut a card from a deck so there's like a black space. You can probably do that on machine. Because I don't really know. Yeah, just press X. It'll just delete it. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, this is looking... So, if you add a 8 card or above, you'll have at least... You'll at least be in, like, the mid-140s range. Which is pretty good. You know, most of these cards you want to be using normally. The only cards you... Right? Are your three smalls. Now, because you have three smalls, you might get the situation in a pull... Or a, a draw where you get your three smalls and a three twelve, and that can happen sometimes, but most of the time it won't. I think running three smalls can work. Um, Table turf is a game of luck after all, but yeah, I mean a lot of these cards are super versatile in general, right? Uh, I uh, one I of the know. things I one of the things I'd say now is yeah. that a position you're in that you weren't at when we were looking at the old deck. Is that right. we're able to look at uh, the deck that we have here and say, okay, here are all of the combos we are theoretically able to pull off. We're going to be thinking about that when we're playing, and we're consistently probably going to be able to get a lot of those off and gain more special points in a reliable fashion. And that wasn't really something that I was able to see with the yes. first deck, and I think that's one of the key things that makes this one uh, yeah, a lot better. The curve is a lot more balanced. I mean, right now, I don't think you need to add it. You have six. You have Captain, 4K Scope, Mud Mouth, Dynamo, Heavy Deco, uh, and the, potentially the other 4K. So, the card yeah. that's jumping out to me right now uh, is Little Judd, and I think that's Ooh. a bit further up. It's a eight cost card. Yeah, it's Little Judd, the boy. There the boy, is. dude. There I love is. him. Yeah, so Little Judd is the go. I mean, he was voted as the third best card in the game, I and mean, maybe I don't know if he's falling off. I think he's still really good. Uh, mm. Do you, uh, Gem? Do you know what Octo Stamp looks like? It's like a cube. It's, it's a four cost. It's not a four cost. Four box. Four box. Four box. Uh, four box. Was, sorry, uh, yes. This this guy. Yeah, right? yeah. So Little Judd is a better version of that card. Hmm. Um, for most situations, I mean Octo Stamp is still really solid, but Little Judd is just bigger, and it. Kind of does Octo Stamp's job just a little bit better. It's great as a special attack. It's really easy to get max value out of it. It combos with a lot of different things, and it's just super nice. You know, a, sh a card's shape in Table Turf will determine kind of its viability. It has a really very awkward shape. It will not do as well. 
Little Judd's shape is fantastic. That little nub hole at the top can be fit into, can plug into so many different things. His little ears. Oh yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> yeah, the, the card art, the card art is fantastic. So if you play Little Judd, you will, we, yeah, you will win more matches. So mm. I would say you could replace it with that. But uh, I mean, right now the way I'm looking at this deck, this is a very, very good first draft for a deck. This, yeah, this is pretty solid. Um, obviously, I don't really know what your preferences are with playstyle or what kind of cards you run, but this is like a lot of very common cards. You know, they're generally considered pretty good, and you can put them all together, and they'll work pretty well. Maybe you might have to swap out one or two things, but this can work on a lot of different maps, and there's a lot of different stuff. There's a lot of combos that you could cook up, you know, inside the match itself. Okay. So so this one of the things I was, I was thinking about, like, Oh, a worry I had was, um, you know, I'd, I'd love to just be able to get, like, my E-leader or my captain on the first draw every time. But I was like, right. how, how am I going to reliably orders. know that I will be able to get an opener card? Um, but I'm looking at it like I could open with the Heavy Splatling. I could open with the Dynamo. Yeah. I could open with get the Captain. Mm -hmm. I've, got, I've got the E-leader. Like, there, there's definitely some options here. So Yeah, because yeah. what at least one third of your deck... You know, there's 15 cards. At least one third of your deck, roughly, can be used as an opener. And that's kind of what you want to do. You want to balance out the openers and your combo tools and your smalls. Um, and that's mm -hmm. kind of what the concept of, of deck curve is. Uh, mm -hmm. And you, you describe that perfectly. So, And especially with the fact that you're able to redraw your opening hand. Yes. Having as many openers as you now have in this deck puts you in a position where you're able to open the game more consistently. Yeah, like, I, I like the way that you were. Uh, I like the way you were talking about it with probabilities earlier. Where you were talking about how, like, I've got you know one third of my deck, and I you know I'm drawing four cards, and one third of my deck will fall into that, and then even if I don't get one, then then the, on the redraw I get four more chances. So like, right. and they're yeah, they're guaranteed to be four new cards, right? When you they're um, not guaranteed to be two, uh, four new cards, no. Oh, you yeah, have, you, could, uh, you could potentially get this, back. You could potentially get a similar hand. But I have the had you... the exact same hand uh, given back no to me. Oh, way. yeah, I've, see, I've seen it that in tournament. It is crazy. unfortunate. Crazy, yeah. uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's, uh, it's crazy. But, uh, yeah, I mean, probability does factor in a deck curve. I mean, people like Showers who, went to, who took statistics in college, you know, she has made entire documents about trying to determine your probability with your opening hand, you know, how likely are you to get this certain card in your opening draw or the redraw? Um, and that plays into it as well. And again, you know, sometimes you will not be the luckiest person in the world and you will lose. But a lot of the time, I feel like you can mitigate that. And I feel like as people are discovering what is the most consistent, people are trying to mitigate RNG more. I mean, we've seen players brick with no, with like very few small cards get beaten by players who run like five smalls um yeah. it's just to uh clarify bricking is when you're in a situation where you have absolutely no cards that are good to play in a situation and that's not necessarily if you have only two big cards imagine if you're i guess in turn two of the game and suddenly you've drawn your small fry your splat bomb your splatana wiper and your i don't know your splat shot i mean that's a terrible yeah. thing to be in <laughs> uh, and you've just bricked turn two, and you've probably lost the game. I would so... say, overall, this deck size is big enough to not be, to not suffer, but it's also not, because the thing is, playing a big deck is very hard, because you have to, you have to, I don't know, possess a certain playstyle and have a certain level of understanding to when it comes to playing a big deck. The, it's more, not... the more you play a deck, the more comfortable you get with it, yeah. the more you're able to consistently put combos together, and eventually get to a, a point where all of your cards fit together so neatly that it's just a block of your color on the screen. Yeah, so I'd say this is pretty solid. You could probably test it against uh, NPC. And I'd say, you know, if you get a decent amount of practice against an NPC, um, you can obviously unlock more because you're only level 23. You can actually play against a, uh, a person. And uh, I would recommend joining the, the TBS pool if you ever want to play against uh, us in Table Turf. Um, if you want to get some uh, practice. Sounds good. Um, yeah. For the I, time I being, the I'll go turf. and uh, just to just to get a you know control control variable versus experimental variable here. We'll we'll go yeah. and uh, play against harmony again. 
right. um, with the new deck and see how this plays out. We, we beat her last time. I was very surprised we did because she had a session <laughs> there where she, well. if she had just been able to fill that with any small card, she would have beaten me, but apparently she right. just had nothing. So let's see if this new deck is going to fare better. And this time, uh, on top of having the new deck, we've got some, some, some folks here to backseat me and <laughs> talk about you know how I should be playing this uh, so they can... Te test my decisions okay as well. so that is not a lot of flexibility with your opener i would go for the redraw honestly mm. if... one of the things uh with this opening hand i'd say you have a relatively all right turn one with that mud mouth but your turn two isn't looking so good so yeah, you're gonna be betting on a lot draw. yeah it doesn't look yeah, like i can reach very far that. into the map here like mm -hmm. the yeah. furthest i've got is a five cost or a five yeah. long so we'll redraw that one Right, yeah, there's not a lot of... You're really uh, betting out a lot. Okay, that's not terrible. I mean, Dynamo's but, a pretty good opening in this map. Dynamo is a good opening on this map because if you uh, rotate it um, 180 degrees... Oh, yeah, you can fit it against the, the lake in the middle. Sorry, uh, two like more times. There we go. <laughs> two more times. Like uh, this? One more time. Like that. And then you slot it right there. Oh yeah, you can get its uh yeah, it's very easy to get its special actually. Mm. Yeah, we can uh, discuss rotations of cards for a while. I it's can't a very... reach that way. I can do this. Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty good. Uh, that's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, you can also fit power clam towards the top as well. Looks like Harney is gonna be kind of aggressive, because that's part of her AI. So honestly, it's... right now, I would try to encroach on her territory with the card and your best option is that power clamp and the thing is you can activate it you know you can push forward to the right and get it special point so one of the things about harmony is that because of her extremely aggressive ai she's more or less going to try and push past you regardless of what you do right so being aggressive back and kind of saying okay i might not be able to cordon off any space it's a fantastic draw by the way uh you pretty much have nothing else you can play the captain on the top right Kind of off that power clam. Oh, yeah, you can do a lot of different rotations. So, generally, you can play Captain. All of his rotations are really good. Because off of this Captain, what you want to be doing is you want to be, you know, playing off the Captain and really, really encroach on that four wide space towards the top and really ruin a lot of Harmony's combos. So, you can play it like that. Um, captain is not a card where you're looking to charge at special tile. It's yeah. a card that gets its value from its shape and its size, not yes. from the combos that you get from it. So you don't need to worry about putting it in a position where none of your cards are able to okay. get combos. So maybe rotation. I use this next to its uh, special tiles so that that's, it's hard for her to claim rotation. those. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very good play. And right the there. thing is, too, you're going to lose this clash. You could potentially get your special point activated from the clash. So that's mm -hmm. kind of another concept. So that's a pretty good rotation, the tentacle uh, mm -hmm. position there as well. I'm interested. What what makes you predict that they're going to clash? That they're going to play well, a card the AI of can partially read your moves. Um, it's oh, well, kind of, we we well, don't know for sure. Um, it's it's heavily supported. Let's just say that Lean definitely ninety, pretty much ninety percent thinks that they do some sort of hand reading in some form. Uh, but generally, it's a lot of reads, right? Table turn reads. It's like you know, Pokemon or whatever. Um, mm. That's turn based as well. It's like okay. I'm going to read this opponent's going to do this, but I'm going to exploit that and get something out of it. So I'm going to hard read. Harmony will actually try to defend because they see you are trying to push up. And they're going to, they're going to try to block you off because of I guess shape, you know? if this was a If this was a match where you were playing against a player, I think you'd be able to predict relatively reliably that they would be playing the cards in the same region that you're playing yeah. your captain right now. The one thing of NBCs is that they don't... They're very inconsistent. Mm. They're... They do very wild things that normal players don't really do. Sometimes they can play really smart. You know, well, well, not what, playing that. What makes you think that they wouldn't? Because, like, t for me, it feels like they would make a symmetrical play where they'd go after this place where I've got these two special tiles in kind of my home base sort of area, and that they'd try to disrupt my ability to claim those by making, a, again, a similar play to what I'm doing here, because that's what I'm doing to them. They've got their two special tiles, right. and I'm trying to mess those up. So 
What makes we you think that they would be aiming to defend this side instead? Well, she is an aggressive AI, so yeah, she could try to push down the left, but, I mean, the other thing too is like, you know, no matter how aggressive she is, if you try to threaten her territory, you know, she will try to defend, um, and that's... Okay. So the, this is a pretty good play here. Our only understanding of how the AIs work right now, uh, what sort of their aims and their goals are, is more or less a single word for their archetype. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So it's aggressive. But um, uh, you were saying that you thought, like, a human player, you would make the hard read that they would be trying to play in the same area that I am here. And yeah. what makes you think that that's the case? So a human player uh, would want to be cordoning off an area, because cordoning off an area is incredibly powerful, because it allows you to take your time over building combos in an area. Uh, without the fear that your opponent is going to try and disrupt them. Okay. And that's why uh, base combos are particularly powerful, because if you're able to put the vast majority of your tiles uh, at an area right at the bottom of the, of, of the map of the stage, where your opponent is not likely to be able to get to them at all, then you can take literally as much time as you want, probably not until the final turn, but you can take a lot of time over building that. Whereas, okay. if you're in a situation where your opponent can access literally all of the stage and no area is safe, then every single combo you do, you're kind of against the clock and you have to guess whether or not your opponent is going to try and disrupt it this turn, if that makes sense. You want to close off areas so, you know, you can have them for later on. You don't want to start your base combos or your combos uh, until much later in the game. You just want to keep space as much as possible. There's uh, against... no time limit in the single player. By the way, yes. like we've, we've been like here two minutes. In tournaments, mm -hmm. uh, we have a 60 second turn time limit. So if you don't have, you can't make a play in 60 seconds, the game will automatically pass your highest value card. So, And that's genuine, generally uh, pretty devastating. Yes. People lose games off of it. Oh uh, yeah, I've seen it plenty of times. <laughs> sometimes due to controller drift as well, which is unfortunate. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what Harmony does here. And, yep, it's exactly. I knew she was going to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, she was trying to defend there and also be aggressive. But look, you also have play that heavy splat lane in the top right, I believe. And maybe? I'm not sure if you can play off the captain. Oh, you can, actually. That's pretty good. Oh, that's a perfect autobomb shaped spot. That's not. Oh, that's really good, actually. Yeah, that rotation. Yes, yeah, so that's going to that... give you a lot of pressure on the top and uh it's gonna because the thing is with bigger decks and people that are really aggressive this map is really nice because you kind of burn people out you can burn out the resources make them keep chasing you around the map and then they can't play anything because you take so much space and then you make them pass i guess one uh, of the things uh, you can say to yourself right now is where on the stage can harmony play a really big card that's going to mm -hmm. put me uh behind in terms of number of tiles and if you slowly constrict that area as much as you can, while still keeping your own options open, then you're at a massive advantage. And that's kind of the point of what it, where you want to be if you're playing aggressively like this. Yeah, if your opponent can't make any legal moves, they can't play a card, that's great. Uh, the best players will always be able to make a play, even if it's a really small card. Uh, the AIs, typically they tend to, you know, they can't place a card. Um, in this given situation, they will just pass, regardless of the context. So, I'd say it's pretty good. Tanakook, that is, uh, that's a, a weird card. Very, very strange. I can't so, think of any cards that Harmony is going to be able to play now in that bottom so, right-hand corner. Right, um, right now, she is being mindlessly aggressive. She's not really caring about her own base. Oh, that is amazing. Yeah, that's, that's a very great. good I play. You can you can slap small fry in the in the bottom there, the bottom right of that ball point, and uh, you can put something. You know, you can put a splatter shot. I think in the left, perhaps. I'm not too sure, but mm -hmm. that's a that's a fantastic play. This is one of those situations where you do have to kind of oh, okay. <laughs> there you we go. Have to yep. say all right, that's, okay. No I've got this really that. great. I've got this really great combo, but my opponent might be able to disrupt. Oh wait, it, that's or... that's amazing though. Look 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 at the ultra stamp. It's right next to the starting box, so you can get a perfect ultra stamp at the end of the game. Ah, uh, that's very good. Yes, I think. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah, normal players. Uh, she only Harmony only has one through twelve. You don't play your through twelve normally unless you literally have no other options to put. 
Um, and then because, you're sacrificing so much in the end game, right? Yes, because you have Ultra Stamp in your own deck, uh, you are now able to get the perfect 24 tile reversal. <laughs> Right, oh, right, right. that's the true, because you put it right next to my special tile. Yeah, so, yes. yeah, normal players are not dumb enough to do that. Um, yeah, you basically have a free 24-point swing at the end of the match. So, I think about this one win condition? This, it might have been the single worst move she could have made. Oh, 100%. Uh, at all. Yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> so, right now, um, you're looking kind of comfortable. You can still push the top right. Hmm. You know, I ooh, would... This oh, sets up a little Judd in the, the bottom combo. right. See, this is what we're... You can set up that spire shot and set up into the little jug combo. Now, do you want to go for that combo? Do you want to push to the top? You could have a lot of different options. I think I would say your focus right now should maybe be in the top left, just because that's a very large area that Harmony could still play her own cards in. Right. But obviously, really? you this is sort of one of those situations where you've got to weigh up all of the opportunities you have and the costs of not taking. Yeah, so I would say that the three cards that you could, you know, three cards you could use right now are that wiper, the because you're not really locked out, so you don't really need to use wiper as a special attack. You can use it to uh, push forward. You don't hmm. have your charger yet, by the way, so you can't just one push of the top. one of the things that I might uh, be thinking is if you use that wiper in just if you put it in the most unhelpful position you could, like literally right there, right. you are disrupting whatever harmony puts there and you're stopping her from playing a big card in that area. But because you have your uh, your E-Leader, which is uh, a two, it, it's too tall, you're still yeah. sort of allowing yourself to play your own large card there while stopping Harmony from playing whatever she wants there. Um, if she does end up playing a large card there, you're going to clash with it, you're going to overlay it because you're almost certainly, uh, the Smaller. wiper is almost certainly smaller than it. So, this is the play I would make, but it's very subjective. And I think anyone watching, some people watching this video might disagree with me on this one. Yeah, I would say also, like, if you make this move that Sterner is telling you about, you're going to amplify your chances of not being able to make a legal move and pass. And then you kind of set up your base combo. So, you, it depends on what you want to use the wiper for. Do you want to use your wiper for getting special tiles, or special blocks, or special points, so, so many specials? Yeah, I, I think do you like, want to use it? Do you want I to have, use it for that, or do you want to use you know a, a combo tool like Little Judder's Fire Shot? I'm thinking I have potential with the combo. If assuming Harmony doesn't play in the lower right, that I have combo there's potential. not a lot she could play in the bottom right. Um, mm. I'm, just, I'm assuming that I still will have that combo to make on the next two turns, and that this uh, like normally i do play the splatana wiper as a combo tool but yeah the, the like bottom left corner got screwed up for that uh, yeah by but the, her the playing the thing. ultra stamp there so i don't really have a great right. corner to play it in right now i don't have a really great slot to put it into so i figure i might as well just use it to disrupt yeah the, the thing is with the wiper it can be used for so many different things like we mm -hmm. said it's a swiss army knife of, of table turf mm -hmm. and so yeah it can be used for this it can be used because the thing is you have the maps around it harmony will be forced her, her AI to push in the top left because you know she can't really push the, the bottom right anymore there's already like there's not a lot going on there so you will definitely win this clash if you play this right now so I, I would just do it see what happens uh okay Ember um that's <laughs> okay well that's kind of weird that's uh yeah a very weird placement um yeah I'm not really sure why she would do that so now uh, you can go yeah, for this can go yeah for this flesh shot player is definitely the best now I would I'm thinking that Harmony might try and... Oh, um, that's... That's uh, unfortunate. You but you do still, spot, do still have a good little Judd spot. Yeah, um, you do. In the bottom right. Right there, if you rotate Left, it. Right at the ballpoint. Yeah, you just gotta if make you sure you rotate it. it. There like you that. go. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so you're gonna get three here. And, oh, Toxic Mist? Interesting. Very interesting there. So what do you got right now? You got the two smalls. It's almost the end of the game. I mean, where could you place this? Hmm. So I do see an easy to activate special points. Yes, that's that's uh, the play I would make. I think right now. Yeah, you draw you drew my mouth pretty late, so might as well use it now. Mm -hmm. Might as well. And then what can I'm, she do? I'm thinking like, is there a way I could probably use the small fry to close up that second one? Yeah, so but there's a lot of different things you can do with a card like Small Fry or Splat Bomb. So we'll get into that maybe in turn. But yeah, you could play that there. Uh, I wouldn't 
I wouldn't yeah, necessarily. I, I don't have the I don't have the other card to fill in this area, so. Mm. Yeah. I think just settling for the special point that you can get just by playing the suction bomb for its own point, rather than trying to set up a combo at this stage of the game, uh, is probably a, a better play to make in this case. Yeah, harmony. Sometimes players will disrupt your comp and see she can make any legal moves. You're gonna get one more special point. Harmony cannot play a 312 at the end of the game. And the reason for that is... Okay, so this is really important. So the reason... Another really good thing for E-Leader is that it's a 411. So it it's costs four special points to play, and it's 11 in size. So what people generally do if they're running solo 312 is on the second to last turn, which is coming up really soon, they'll play that E-Leader 4K, get a couple special points back, then play their E-Leader. Um, and that does two things. It gets special points back, and it allows you to steal turf. And then you can play that perfect ultra stamp on the left. So what I would do is I would find a spot for the, the small fry. There's a couple spots you could get a special see, point. I, I can, can see, see a good spot for the yeah, egg. I can see a couple. Yeah, I can spots. see if you rotate that with the special point facing down, you can activate, you know, up there. I would, there's a spot or, right next to where you placed uh, Little Judd. Yeah. If you rotate it uh, again, right here. like that. So there's that, yeah. You don't want to give your opponent special uh, like special points, you know, as much as possible. But yeah, you could do that. Um, there's really no opportunity for getting two right now. You could do that, too. You could activate the special point up there. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you do. You just got to do something. Um, you have a perfect... You basically have a win condition for the end game. So you just got to get a special point. It doesn't matter how you get it. But basically, you play the small fight, get a special point, play the E-Leader... Uh, you know, get some special points back, the and then play your ultra doesn't have stamp. a space where I can place it at the moment. There aren't any yeah. seven, seven yeah. Although, well, areas. I do see one spot. Actually, no, I do see a spot. Because she played E-Leader at the top, you get a perfect E-Leader. But I don't know if that's... Oh, so I would be using the, the, the special then on how many this special instead, points of, the, right instead now? of the 312. Web... Yeah, how many special points do you have right now? Your webcam is blocked. Uh, Gem has four, yes. Gem has four, so... Oh, yeah, I'm right in front of it, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, I have. I mean, I have four available, so I wouldn't be amazing. able to use this and then the three twelve is the thing. Yeah, I think um, before deciding what you want to do on the second to last turn, uh, just playing the small fry so we can see what cards you have uh, is good. Right. We'll see. We'll see what you get here. But yeah, you just gotta get one point. Uh, make sure yeah. you actually. Okay, I was trying to figure good. out if there was a way I could get two, and I don't think no, there is. No, there's no spot. And this would give them a the, this would give them a point. Yeah, yeah so you don't, don't want do that. that. You don't want that because she could play a five cost. One of the few cards in the game in the last three turns is a five cost card. So things that are bigger than a bigger than twelve, but uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter where you play it. That that works. Let's see what she does here. Uh, she's gonna special attack Scrapper. Doesn't really matter. She's wasting a ton of resources from that. Um, and you're not even, you know. So, is there a way to play? Hmm, I wonder if there's a way to play E Leader and get E Leader 4K. If there's a way to get. So, if you special attack the E Leader 4K. Uh, not oh, the scope. The no, no, no. no. That, yeah, you would you would not get three back. You need three back for that Ultra Stamp. So, is there a way to play E Leader 4K, special attack it, and okay, so I would need, need to make uh, two special points from playing this for it to be worth it. Yeah. I'm not necessarily, I think we might be in a situation where you have to pass, but you're still in a much better position than Harmony. Yeah, so you have to find a position. It doesn't really matter if you get a lot of points. You just gotta find a situation where you can get to. I definitely see a situation. Um, oh, I think. Uh, that could work. If you, if you, if you move it. Um, the special sorry. point facing to the left, and then you go to the left of it. Like here? Ooh, yeah, that's gonna give her a special play, but it doesn't really matter. That's really good, honestly. It's probably your best play. It's I think that's a, that's a... It's a play that wouldn't work necessarily against a human player. Right, but, but we're fighting an NPC, so... <laughs> we're fighting an NPC, so I think we're, she we're, we're doing good. She will 100% pass. That will not give you two special blues. Mm. I'm trying to think if there's a, another way to get that without giving her one. Yeah. This works. Ooh, that, that could work. Actually, yeah, yeah I think that's, that's much uh, better. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. 
that's much better. Oh no! Wait, 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 wait! We just specialed over the part where we were gonna play the. Three oh yeah. Well, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We we it doesn't can, matter. Uh, I'm sure we can still find a, a another place to fit this yeah. in that's still gonna be pretty mm. impactful. Yeah, ultra stamp. Yeah, it's not gonna be a perfect. Aww. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Go up or. Uh, play ultra you... stamp towards the top. It'll touch the special block there. That's still a lot of value. Yeah. Well, it can be like this, so like, we're only wasting two of them. That's ten. That's really good. Like yeah, 10, that's, that's a very good spot for that's, it. That's perfect, perfect. I mean, not perfect think... value, but you know what I mean. Well, well we got I... more than two from the E-leader blocking the other one off as well. Right. So This, yeah, is, um, this is a guaranteed win, I think, this card yeah. placement here. She cannot do anything. You win this. This is your win condition. And there you go! You destroyed Harmony. Absolute, absolute destruction. Nice. A little so bit, instead little of... Weird, being very lucky that she didn't have a card to play, I have now beaten her by 34 points. <laughs> yeah, you have you have destroyed Harmony's dream. She will not play Table Turf anymore. That that whole idea to use my second to last card to make two more special points, that hadn't even occurred to me, and that was like way more ambitious than what I was going for. So that worked out really well. Yeah, it's something that works uh, particularly well. Um, against uh, player NPCs, but it does work against players as well. So it's something you should consider um, when you're looking at the board and trying to come up with a plan to uh, make the best with what you have. It's kind of the theme of table turf, I guess. Yeah, using 411s or using cards to get back special points to play your 312 at the end of the game is instrumental, and 411s are definitely one of the best cards for that. Um, but yeah, congratulations. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for helping me get 130 more table turf points. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no problem. No problem. And uh, uh, hopefully, you'll get where, many more. And uh, where should they reach out if they're they're looking for more stuff for uh, more table turf resources, more of that sort of thing? It, um, g give me some links, of course. But uh, what resources in general are they looking for? So a lot of our resources are located inside of our Discord server. So table turf battle. Uh, server or TBS, we are, you know, if you, if this video has made you interested in table turf, be sure to join TBS. We all stream our tournaments on Twitch. We have a Twitter, we have a YouTube, um, we have a Tumblr. No, we don't have a Tumblr. Um, we also have like a, a subreddit page. <laughs> the vast majority of our resources are found on our Discord server. Uh, we have a whole channel dedicated to them. We've had some very, very talented players who have pushed the game uh, to some really quite impressive lengths. Uh, spend a very long period of time writing out their thoughts uh, are all uh, tiers of table turf competitive play I suppose there's lots of stuff for beginners and there's also lots of stuff for if you want to push your decks and how you go thinking about the game um, as far as you want kind of thing so if you join the table turf battle server uh, one of the good things uh, for that as well is that more or less every single competitive table turf player who is going out there and winning multiple tournaments a week, you know, getting tons of uh, Sendu.ink badges by winning uh, Julon or any of the other tournaments are on the server. So you can basically talk to more or less like one of the world's best players about what decks they play. I guess it's a bit like being able to casually stroll into the Plus server and receive custom feedback is kind of how I'd say it. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming on and teaching me about the game. And uh, hope you guys learned something from it. I definitely did. Um, that'll help you in your future table turfing. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good one.